U.S. and his conspiracy-brained advisors and propagandists continued to cheer him on. The nationalists were unhappy with him because they wanted him to invade all of Ukraine, and the liberals were unhappy with him because American sanctions had damaged the economy. To quote Alexander Dugan, Crimea was the culmination point, the last stop before changing absolutely the logic of the development of modern Russia. But it didn't happen. I don't know why. It was a betrayal. For the patriotic group, it was a betrayal by Putin of our awakening. And for liberals, it was a betrayal by Putin of globalist rules. So Putin has betrayed both parties. And it is the worst that could possibly happen. Because we've committed half the crime, but paid the full price. Backed into a corner, surrounded by yes-men, facing a ticking clock and slowly going insane under COVID lockdown, Putin decided to cut the Gordian knot and prove once and for all that Ukrainian democracy was a Potemkin village. And you know the rest. What? In August of 2014, as the war was heating up, the Russian ultranationalist militias decided to throw a party for themselves. A celebratory bike show in newly annexed Crimea. This bike show also included a poetry reading interpretive dance rock opera version of the war in Ukraine, as they imagined it. They spared no expense, and I recommend everyone go and watch this video because it's one of the better views you can get into the mindset of the type of people who started this war. Like a sort of Putin-themed psychonauts level. Defenseless riot cops are terrorized by Ukrainian Nazis, while the giant wire mesh hands of Uncle Sam pull their puppet strings. A drum line of blood-vomiting bikers stand at attention in front of the Eye Pyramid of the New World Order, while speeches of Barack Obama and Adolf Hitler spliced together are played over the loudspeaker. All while the leader of a motorcycle gang that simultaneously venerates both Joseph Stalin and Tsar Nicholas as saints reads anti-Semitic poetry about how this war is the culmination of Stalin's dream. In 1993, Yeltsin was having people like this gunned down in the street. In the late 90s, they were tolerated but still politically marginalized. By the mid-2000s, they had been made part of the systemic opposition, by 2012, they were exercising real political power. And now, here they are, in 2014, with the backing of the president, on national state television, in front of a crowd of hundreds of thousands, dancing in a swastika formation to Hans Zimmer Batman music. <laughs> there are people who see this progression and think it was inevitable that this is the expression of the real Russia. But all I can see are the contingencies. The stupid, stupid contingencies. I didn't make these videos to prove to you that Russia is imperialist and therefore bad. I made them to prove that the Russians are stupid. They're inept imperialists. Because the stupidity is the tragedy here. Imperialism is rational, if not good. So it's somewhat inevitable in a world with strong countries and weak countries. But this, this was a waste. Anyone who tells you Alexei Navalny or whoever is just as bad as Putin because he's just a smarter, subtler nationalist is greatly underestimating the destructive capacity of stupidity. But it's not just Russia. Who else could it be?